Hello and welcome to part four of the ABS for Newbies guide. This will be the final part in the series for now. What we're gonna be going over today is some final tips and tricks to help ensure that your ABS prints succeed. So we're gonna start off by touching back on enclosures and we're gonna go over two things here. This is called the heat soak and the cool down. Now, for those that are familiar with Vorons and have been in the Voron Discord for a while, you've probably heard the term heat soak used quite often before in regards to the procedure before starting a print. Now the heat soak helps with three things. One, it allows the air temperature within the enclosure to rise to a stable equal point. This helps with long-term print success. Two, this allows the printer to reach a stable equilibrium in terms of temperature. Metals expand at higher temperatures and depending on how your printer is built, how it's enclosed and the temperatures you're running at, you may find things grow a little bit, flex a little bit at higher temperatures. So consistently printing after a certain amount of time to allow everything to kind of reach a balanced state can help with more consistent print quality, especially with the first layer. And the third biggest reason to heat soak is printers that have a bed probe that is susceptible to temperature drift. Now I'm sure you've all experienced this before and this is why a lot of people don't like inductive probes for example, is they read different at different temperatures. However, a common misnomer is that they are more inaccurate at different temperatures. This is not true. They are consistently accurate. It's just the temperature offset and the sense distance will change depending on the temperature they are at. Now I've run two tests here running the probe accuracy test in Clipper. The first one is at room ambient temperature. The printer was off all night. And the second one was after a 10 plus minute heat soak with the bed at 110 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, the sense distance is different between the two temperatures. However, they're both accurate within their same temperature. So what this means is if you're using a probe that is susceptible to temperature drift as your Z offset, you should be running the same setup every time you go to print for consistent results. For example, with my printers, what I do is I put the nozzle in the middle of the bed, 10 millimeters off the deck. I heat everything up to the temperature I'm gonna be printing at, for example, ABS, 110 degrees roughly. I let everything sit for 10 minutes after the bed reaches its desired temperature, and then I start the bed probe and the print. This way I have consistent results every time. All my offsets are set up for those temperatures. So that is one thing you may have to play around with offsets depending on the bed temperature you're printing at, but this will give you a more consistent, better result. Now the opposite of the heat soak is the cool down. Now with ABS or any other plastic that requires printing at a higher ambient temperature, I always recommend that you wait until the chamber returns to ambient temperature before opening the printer. The reason for this is a sudden rush of cool air from opening the printer too early can cause parts to warp, crack, or even delaminate. I've had this happen to me by jumping the gun a little bit and trying to get a print off the bed a little too early and nothing is worse than ruining a 12 hour print because you didn't want to wait an additional five minutes. So I always recommend waiting at least till the printer returns to near ambient temperatures of the room before opening it up. Now we're going to look at some slicer settings and tricks here that may help a lot with your prints succeeding. Now the first one here is part orientation on your bed. Now this really depends on what type of bed you're running and what type of printer. For a printer where the bed doesn't move in the X or Y direction, it is best to group your prints near the middle of the bed. This is where the air is going to be the warmest and it's going to be the most consistent temperature. If you put parts near the edge of the bed, you might encounter situations where one side of the print is warmer than the other side due to environmental factors. Another thing is depending on how your bed is constructed, if it's a silicone mat attached to an aluminum plate or PCB bed, a lot of beds don't have heater traces near the very edge of the bed. So you might have temperature differentiations as well. So when possible, try and group your prints near the middle of the bed. And this would be a setup for on like say a Prusa or an Ender 3 where the bed moves in the Y axis. Now orientating your prints in this direction uh, can help a lot when it comes to the prints moving in and out of that hot warm bubble of air that sits over the middle of your bed. By minimizing bed movement, you give your prints the best chance to succeed by keeping them in the hot air as long as possible. Now, if you're only gonna print one object or a small object, there are a few things you have to keep in mind as well. With ABS, it likes to cool naturally on its own. It doesn't like being blasted with a part cooling fan, for example. And two, if you pump too much heat in a small area, you'll get poor print quality results. As you can see when I was doing the speed benchy, those smokestacks did not turn out well. Too much heat in a small area with ABS, it just turns to mush essentially. 
So there are a few ways to get around that. One of them is to set a minimum layer time. Now with a minimum layer time, what this does is it tells the printer that anytime a layer is gonna be less than that time, it will simply slow down the print head. Another option is to have the print head move off the print and wait until the layer time finishes and then move back to continue. Both those have advantages and disadvantages. With having a minimum layer time, what can happen is as the print head speeds up and slows down, you may see visible defects in the outer quality of the print because as the printer speeds up and slows down, the extrusion rate changes, flow rate changes, and you may see the speed pick up and slow down in print quality. Now, in my experience, I've never had anything actually cause a functional defect in the print by doing that method. It's mostly just a cosmetic thing. The other option is to move your tool head off the print once it's done that layer and then wait and then move back. Now by moving the print head on and off the print continuously, that can cause defects from stringing and oozing as well. So personally, I'd rather go with the minimum layer time than moving the print head off and on continuously. Now another trick is simply print more parts at the same time. This allows you to lengthen your minimum layer time while keeping the high speed and getting more done at once. Now this can be accomplished by simply adding more parts that you need to print to the bed or what you can do, and I've done it in the past, is add a sacrificial part, a calibration cube, an empty square, something on the other side of the bed, move it away from your main object. In this way, the additional print time and the additional travel time will help bump up your minimum layer time and give you consistent results. Now, another thing to keep in mind like this is when you are batching prints and printing multiple at a time, is try to arrange them by height. You don't want to try and print a bunch of really short, small objects and then print one really tall object in the middle of the bed. This will affect your minimum layer times and your print quality as well. So you do want to try and keep things arranged by height. Now, when it comes to overhangs and bridges with ABS, a lot of people seem to have struggles with this, mostly for the fact that they're running no fans. Now, if you go into your slicer settings, and I'm just gonna use Cura for an example here, with a lot of slicers now, they do have settings specifically for bridging. So for example here, Cura does have bridging settings that you can play with, and they are quite elaborate. Now, a lot of bridge settings where they help is either speeding up or slowing down the print, adding an additional support layer to a bridge, or ramping up or slowing down fans for overhangs or bridges. So what I recommend is take a profile that you know works. For example, the Voron V2 profile in Cura for bridging is actually quite well. So what I would recommend is simply steal the settings from there and use that as a baseline and then tweak to your printer's need. Now with bridging and overhangs, fans are gonna help in this case. There's really no getting around that. Now you can run fans with ABS and I run a low part fan when I print ABS, especially with overhangs and bridges. However, you do need higher ambient temperatures, 45 degrees plus, the hotter the better, and you are still running a pretty low fan. I run my fans usually five to 15% at most for part cooling with ABS, just to get a little bit cleaner overhangs and bridges. So don't be afraid to dive into your slicer settings for overhangs and bridges. And another thing that greatly impacts overhangs is make sure you're printing your walls inner to outer and print infill first, okay? By printing infill first, this allows your walls something to stick to, and by printing the walls inner to outer, it allows the outer walls something to stick to. This does help a bit to make sure things aren't drooping down when you're printing those overhangs. And then if you are experiencing curling, which is when the parts warp up, usually this is an issue caused by too much heat in a small area. So what I would recommend is either slowing down your print speeds for outer walls if you're experiencing this, or printing multiple parts or a sacrificial part on the other side of the bed, for example, to try and give those overhangs time to cool down. Because basically, you don't wanna to dump too much heat into that overhang too quickly. This will cause it to curl up. You want it to naturally cool nice and slowly before putting the next layer on. And one last little trick here is something I like to call a brim puck. Now, other people call them Mickey Mouse ears uh, for a reason you'll see very soon here. Now, say you're printing an object that you find doesn't really require a brim. However, you have one area that's constantly warping up and you don't want to enable full brims for the part. What you can simply add is what I like to call a brim puck. And what they are is simply a disc. You can easily make these in Windows 3D Builder or any basic CAD software. I make mine about 20 millimeters circular, one layer tall. 
And what you can do is add these to your print so that the first layer has some additional adhesion in areas where you think it may warp or where you've experienced warping in the past. Now these do come in handy when you're trying to keep your print time down. Sometimes a full brim is nowhere near needed, but there is one small area that you may have a little bit of warping. So I do use these quite often whenever I'm printing larger objects where I just wanna make sure that one area sticks down I find this method works quite well. I use it often and it's definitely better than trying to go in there and salvage a print by taping it down mid print. And finally, this is the biggest tip and this is the hardest tip for some people to realize, but the cancel button is your friend. Sometimes it is better off to just end the print, cancel it where it's at, let everything cool down, pull the parts off the bed, let everything warm back up and try again. We've all printed warped parts okay nothing is worse than going to check on a print and you see a corner lifting off the bed you see a part already popped off and moving around we've all been there it happens when you're printing abs especially when you're new at it you're printing with a new filament you haven't used before check on your prints often have a camera remote watching them so you can keep track if you need to but pay attention if you start to see stuff popping off the bed start warping you have delamination make a call and honestly, most of the time, the best call is to cancel the print, adjust your settings. Maybe you forgot to clean the bed. There's a little bit of finger oil on it. That's why the print didn't stick there. But canceling a 12 hour print one hour in is always better than it failing 10 hours in and scrapping all the parts because you woke up to spaghetti, your parts popped off the bed, everything's all stuck together, or your parts just warped to the point where they're unusable, even if they did stick to the bed. I've had it happen. I'm sure you've had it happen. Everyone's had print failures. It is usually better to just cancel it when it starts to fail, start over, adjust your settings, than it is to try and let it finish because odds are it won't finish correctly. So I hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If you did like the video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you wanna see more content such as that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. As always, if you wanna support the channel by any means, there are affiliate links below and links to my Patreon if you would like to help out, support what I do. And I hope to see you on my Saturday streams as well. Be safe out there, wash your hands, and have a nice day.